With external debts totaling more than 100% of its gross domestic product, basically its overall earnings, Ukraine has massive economic problems. Experts predict inflation to remain in double digits in 2016, while some 40% of work is thought to be on the shadow economy. So corruption is rife. The World Bank-supported Governance Index estimates that only 15% of countries globally were doing worse than Ukraine at controlling it in 2014. The country needs a fast response, and although there is now legislation in place, there is a pressing need to make the institutions work. For now, the main thing that we're focused on is the uh, process of establishing the new institutions. And this is the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, which has already finished the selection of 75 detectives and uh, which are now uh, being educated uh, to start working. This is the selection of the anti-corruption prosecutor. And that would facilitate the start of the work of the uh, anti-corruption bureau. And the third one is the Agency on the Prevention of Corruption which of course will monitor the asset declarations and the electronic way of lodging these declarations. The European Union and Council of Europe launched what's called a Programmatic Cooperation Framework, or PCF, as a wide framework response starting in 2015. The issues of corruption, good governance and money laundering are being addressed by a project in Ukraine. This initiative provides the Ukrainian authorities with access to Council of Europe expertise in dealing with corruption and economic crime. The three-year initiative also provides for dialogue with civil society, with campaigners believing that their collaboration with key international partners holds the key to progress. I truly believe that the work, the job that the security, the Council of Europe uh, is doing in Ukraine in terms of uh, the projects um, is extremely important simply because it combines these two things and it helps the civil society to um, address the uh, urgent issues um, in this battle with corruption. The project also draws on the experiences of other anti-corruption bodies. Members of Ukraine's new National Anti-Corruption Bureau have recently returned from a regional workshop run by the Council of Europe's Economic Crime and Cooperation Unit in Istanbul, bringing back with them fresh ideas. Ukraine's economic weakness, worsened by the frozen conflict in its east, encourages corruption, which only makes things worse. The Council of Europe, with EU funding, is working with the Ukrainian authorities and others to fight it. We might say that we receive a lot of help and uh, we uh, work together just on the regular basis in the uh, team for the anti-corruption reform, uh, which I'm heading and leading because this team includes all the experts from national and international level and all together we decide what are the next steps. If the project achieves its goals, reducing corruption, compliance with European standards on such things as asset recovery, bribery and influence peddling, and strengthening its anti-corruption tools, all Ukrainians, except perhaps those few who profit from corruption, will be better off and it will help the recovery of the Ukrainian economy as well as bring about better governance and justice.